Okay. All right, thank you. I should make myself smaller. Okay. So uh, you guys know that the sun emits UV ray and if you get too much UV ray, you get skin cancer. So that's why you need to wear sunscreen. I hope everyone is wearing sunscreen, whether you're a boy or a girl, because we're not pro protecting our skin from becoming dark. We're protecting our skin from UV rays, which is the main cause of cancer. So wear your sunscreen. So um, light is a form of radiation. We have other types of radiation as well, but light is a type of is one of the radiation that is, exists in the world. So light, the speed of light is given by C. C is three times 10 to the eight, if I'm not mistaken, meter per second. Okay, so the speed of light is very fast. Basically, you just look at it, it's already there. You can't, your eyes cannot detect when the light reaches that place because it's too fast. Your eyes are not equipped to capture the fastness of the light. So that's why the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meter per second. So speed of light is equal to frequency times wavelength, which means that if you know the wavelength, you will know the frequency. And if you know the frequency of your light, you will know the wavelength because it is given by a constant C. So it's a product of constant, sorry, the product of those two gives you C. C is a constant. C does not change. Okay, so here we have um, a spectrum. This is called a spectrum. So we have two sides here. We have one side. One side is called frequency. And if you convert it using this equation, you will get wavelength. Okay, so here we see that to 10 to the... So you have like 10 to the 8 is called radio waves. And then you have 10 to the 12, 10 to the 16 frequency is infrared to ultraviolet. And in within this range, we have one section where we can see all the lights. It's red, blah, 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 uh, yellow, green, blue, purple. The things that you can see is within this region. This is where your eyes are equipped to see the radiation. Otherwise, this part and this part, your eyes, your eyes is not that uh, advanced. You, we have machines that are ad more advanced than your eyes. So this is the part that you can see, which is four times ten to the fourteen to seven times nine to ten to the times ten to the fourteen frequency. Sorry, hertz. Okay, it's red to violet, basically the rainbow colors, lah. Okay, anything that you see in the world. Any color that you see in the world is within this range. Okay, it's within that range. Um, okay, what else did I want to tell you about this part? Um, so basically, frequency can be converted to wavelength using this equation. Nanti kita akan try pakai. Don't have to cover this one. We talked about this one. Um, P equals to sigma E area times temperature in Kelvin to the power of four. This equation is not going to be uh, on the exam. <laughs> I'm telling you up front so, because it's not like the highlight of this chapter. Okay, so here we are, we are, look at this graph. I want to show you a bigger version of this graph. How do I make this bigger and this smaller? Okay, you can go over there first. Okay, so they tested, they wanted to see, okay, talking about the Stefan's equation tadi tu, kita dah belajar pasal Stefan equation, which was the power um, when you have um, an object, the power emitted by an object. I don't know if you guys remember, the power emitted by an object. Ni macam background, background story, eh? just... Bear with me with this story. Power emitted by an object when it has a certain temperature. Okay. So the certain temperature and it has a certain area, certain temperature and E is the emissivity. If it's a black body, it has, the E is equal to one, which means that it <clears throat> absorbs and also emits equal amounts 
it's the best absorber and also the best emitter. So E equals to one is uh, for the black body, uh, black body anomaly, black body, yeah. And this is just a constant. Okay, so if you guys can remember that, so they tested, um, they tested the P sigma E A T to the power of four. They wanted to know what was the power emitted by this one object. So they tested it. They put it inside a machine, and this uh, object has some. It the object has some type of temperature. Contact. It has some temperature. For example, three thousand Kelvin, four thousand Kelvin, five thousand Kelvin, six thousand, and so on. They heated up the object, put it inside the machine, and see what 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 the object would radiate. Dia nak tengok apa type of radiation that the object would give at a certain temperature. For example, this object was heated at 3000 Kelvin and then they put it in the machine and tried to capture all the radiation that the, uh, that the object would give out. So they plotted this graph for 3000 and then 4000 panaskan, masuk machine, capture whatever radiation that the object would give, plotted this diagram and then so on. Sampai dapat 6,000 Kelvin punya readings. So that was the experiment and they got this graph. Okay, so here we can see that when we, you increase the temperature, the, um, the power density emitted by the object was also increased. Bila naik temperature, lagi banyak. Okay, bila lagi, lagi banyak, lagi naik temperature, lagi banyak power density that it emits. And they found out that it has a peak at 483 nanometer. And this corresponded to the visible region lah. Okay, around that lah. So what was the point of this um, experiment? It was an experiment to show that the black body radiation curve shows that the black body does radiate energy at every wavelength. Walaupun dia ada peak at this region, Sebenarnya at all wavelength, it has some type of energy that it radiates. Kat sini ada, kat sini ada, kat sini ada, kat sini ada. So you have to um, keep that in mind that walaupun an object says that it emits at a certain wavelength, sebenarnya it can emit other wavelengths as well but maybe that power is so small that it's not detectable if you're not using an advanced machine. Okay, so that was the point of this graph. So wavelength, so you just have to keep in mind that wavelength ni boleh exist untuk every object. Cuma tinggi atau tak tinggi je power dia. Okay, so when you see a question yang kata wavelength of um, an object, sorry, sorry, this calculator is black, right? Uh, so the black color is maybe around this guy, the violet punya region. But dalam soalan dia cakap, this calculator has a wavelength of uh, around here. What is this? A red. A red punya wavelength. Boleh. Sebab maybe this is a combination of red and purple. Who knows? You can't see it. Right? But it exists. So don't be like mind blown when they give you a wrong wavelength. It's not wrong. It's just the power is different. Okay? So that's the point. Okay, moving on. So that was like the backstory that's go not going to be on the exam, but I think it's important for you to develop the understanding for this chapter. So we are going to learn about photoelectric effect. That's the highlight of this chapter. By highlight, I mean it's going to be on the exam. So here, after completing this chapter, you must be able to explain Planck's theory of light, apply its theory to calculate the energy of radiation, and then we have another guy that decided to be smarty and give out a new, a new equation. We have a, an equation here, another equation here because he decided to be smart. He decided to be smart, and then calculate the Broglie's wavelength. So we have two equations that is very important in this chapter. Uh, this is the first subtopic. Sorry, you have two subtopics here. Okay, so wow, this is a lot. Mm. Okay, so Planck decided that kita cakap pasal dia punya summary je lah. Planck said that okay energy is quantized, energy is discrete and energy is proportional to frequency. That was Planck's theory. 
And from here, because he said energy is proportional to frequency, there must be a constant in front of this guy when we have something that is proportional. Remember, if I say that um, if I say that temperature is proportional to area of the object, this is just my theory. Bukan theory, ini macam contoh je. If I say temperature is proportional to area, if it goes into an equation, it must have an, a, a constant. I'll call this constant N for net. Okay? Boleh. But it must have a constant. Bila kita cakap pasal something that is proportional. Something that is inversely proportional pun, kena ada a constant. It always works like that. So when he said, E is proportional to frequency. He said, okay, I'm going to come up with an equation. E is equal to HF, where H is the Planck's constant. Ha, kan? Dia guna nama dia. Ha. Sebab dia yang buat equation ni. So Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus minus 34 joules per second. Now let's do some dimension analysis. What does it mean by joules per second over here? So energy is in joules, right? Uh, we have our 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. Frequency is in, what is the unit of frequency? Anyone? Hertz. 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 Okay, so if I put Hertz here, okay. And I see that the Planck constant has joules per second. How does it cancel out to make it joules? How does it cancel out to make joules? So I need everything to cancel out to only give me joules over here. How can I cancel this out? The frequency, the frequency is as negative as two. Yes is hertz or one over second, betul. So frequency in this case is one over second. Eh, sorry. This is joule second, sorry. It's not joules per second. Yeah, saya so silap kat sini. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so joules per second, this is one over second. So it cancels out. So you are left with joules, okay. So if they give you this constant, you don't remember the rest of the units of your equation. Look at this guy. Energy is always in joules, so frequency must be 1 over second or hertz. Of course, frequency. Tapi contohlah kalau tak ingat. Eh? So that's a way. Because constant is always provided. Use it as a hint for your equations. Okay. All right. So thank you, Plank, for, com for coming up with an equation that now we have to learn. Right, so E equals to HF, light energy is quantized, which means that light can only have a certain number. Tak boleh suka hati. Number dia tak boleh suka hati. That's the point of this equation. Tak boleh suka hati. Quantized, quantized means it has a specific number. Cannot be any random number. That's the point of this equation. Okay, so that was Planck. Uh, so Planck's theory of radiation also equates another equation to his equation. E equals to HF and also E equals to HC over lambda, where F is frequency, lambda is wavelength, and C is the speed of light. Okay, this is the speed of light. So look at this equation, HF equals to HC over lambda. If you cancel out H, you will find out that F is equal to C over lambda. So this is another equation that you should remember. Okay, or you can just remember this equation and derive this second one. Uh, Afikal, okay, go. Oh, okay. No questions. Okay, so our first equation is this guy. Second equation, third equation, or you can derive it. Okay. So yani energy, specifically energy, when you multiply H with H with C over lambda, you get energy. When you multiply H with frequency, you get energy. But this equation tells you, number three, number three equation tells you frequency is equal to speed of light over lambda, which is the first one that we saw. Not that one. Not that one. This one, C equals to F lambda. So, tak kisah macam mana arrangement, asalkan ingatlah C equals to F lambda or 
this one c equals to f lambda same one okay pilih mana yang senang nak ingat so we have three equations now okay so wave nature of matter here comes another smarty pants so louis de broglie i hope i'm pronouncing that right. i think he's french extended the idea of wave particle duality so planck cakap what did planck say Planck said light kena ada certain number, tak boleh random values. This guy comes, cakap, oh sebenarnya light tak boleh jadi particle je. It has to, it has some characteristics of a wave. So that's why they call it the wave particle duality. So light behaves as a particle and also as a wave. Nanti kita akan tengok how that is. Um, particles such as electrons may behave as waves. So as you, I think you know that electrons is like uh, small circles. So when you baling, bukan baling lah, when you when it moves, right, you expect it to move like a ball or expect it to move like a bullet, something like that. If it has some velocity, right? However, when they are bunched up together, when they are like a lot, and you pass it through like a small gap, they behave like waves. So diorang akan, they will go out of that gap and behave like waves. Just like sound waves, just like water waves. It looks like that, exactly like that. But dalam wave tu ada biji-biji-biji of the electrons or the photons. Okay. So let me redraw this. So ni mak banyak, diorang berkumpul. And then we push it outside through this gap. And then what do you call this? I think it's called diffraction. <laughs> so it will form dalam bentuk waves. So dalam waves ni ada the electrons or the particles. Okay. So it behaves like particles and also it behaves like waves. Okay. So the, the Broglie's wavelength. This is your fourth equation. Lambda equals to H over mv. So dia pakai Planck's constant. Dia cakap okey lah Planck aku, aku pakai lah constant kau ni. Bagi kau famous. So h over mv. So m refers to the mass of the particle. v is the velocity. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Mana dia punya explanation? Uh, eh dia tak explain. That's so weird. So this is mass of electron and this is the velocity. Okay. The velocity or the speed. So let's go back to our equation. That's so weird. Did I explain the dalam slide? Okay, never mind. So this guy is in wavelength. If this is guy is in wavelength, this guy is in meters. Okay, it's a wavelength. Typically, wavelength is in nanometer times ten to the minus nine. But just convert everything to SI lah. If it's in centimeter, make it meter. If it's millimeter, make it to meter. And then Planck's constant. You don't have to memorize. It will be given. Mass is in kg. Oops and velocity is in or speed is in meter per second okay uh this guy is in joules per second so how does it cancel out um i don't remember should i remember joules is so we have second over here it cancels out so kilogram times meter kilogram times meter uh, M A. Hmm, so I'm going to I'm sorry, it's Friday. Nanti kita akan go back to this one for the dimension analysis. Okay, so this is electron diffraction. Uh, it exhibits wave-like properties of particles. Okay, so as you can see, there's like this wave behavior. Dalam wave ni ada the particles. So dia nak juga jadi wave kan? Mengada betul, but that's how it is. So this is neutron diffraction. Mm, I have no idea how to explain this diagram. I'm not a physicist. I will try to explain this later. I forgot what this diagram. Okay. So what did de Broglie say? I mean, like, let's summarize what he said. He said that Mumula Planck cakap energy is quantized, cannot be random values. The equation was E equals to HF equals to HC over lambda. From this equation, we also know that C equals to F lambda. So that is what Planck said. The Broglie said uh, lambda 
is equal to h over mv the mass times the velocity ya Allah kenapa gatal yang saya ni the mass times velocity and h divided by that gives you lambda the broglie's wavelength so the broglie's wavelength ni nama ya eh? nama so when the question asks you find out what is the de broglie's wavelength for this the, the situation so use this equation dia dah kasih hint terang-terang dah when you have something that has mass it has speed use the broglie's equation to find out the wavelength okay so let's not read this okay so let's go over this uh, example what is the energy in ev energy can be in joules or ev of a photon of yellow light of wavelength 500 so lambda is equal to 500 nanometer so it's asking what is the energy so we have learned from planck's theory e equals to hf or e equals to h what was it c over lambda did i get it right yeah okay so we want to know we already know what c is we already know what h is we have lambda so we can actually find what is e so let's find e first so h is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 i'm cheating because i don't remember i'm just looking at sebelah sana je lepas tu c is 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second right and then your lambda is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meter tukar nanometer tu jadi meter jangan pandai-pandai letak nano kat situ so you will get something in joules okay so in this case it's 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules so how do you convert it to ev okay so i don't remember let's google it so convert joules to ev V means electron volts. Yeah? So one joule is equal to 6.242 times 10 to the power of 18. <clears throat> okay, I don't remember. 6.242, Okay, 6.242, So here, just said to 6.242 times 10 to the 18. So one joule is equal to this much. However, kalau kita tengok di Right, when we look at this uh, equation, okay. yeah, tak nampak slide. Oh, sorry, see, baik, see, baik, begitu saya. <clears throat> oh, saya ada chat kejap. Sorry, doctor, terkeluar. Oh, okay, no problem. All right, so tadi kita Google, we found out that one joule is equal to this much of EV, but here they divided this. They divided the joules with 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 to get the EV. Is it the same thing? Yes, it's the same thing. So don't get confused when you Google, you get this um, you get this value. But dalam solution dalam class dapat macam ni. Kenapa dia sama? Because this is just 1 over, sorry, this is just um, 1 over this will give you 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. So let's try to do it ourselves and see if we get the same answer. Eh? I don't know what constant they give you in the book. Let's see. <clears throat> Chapter 22, punya constant. Convert to EV at the top. Because I remember we learned about EV last semester. Like, siapa ada masa nak ingat? Uh, constant punya value right <coughs> so kita bagi kan eh? tak jumpa do you guys have your book so we have ev how do we convert to ev kita bagi tahu no kita bagi tahu okay so if you google it you will find out that the value is 1.602, no, what is the value? 6.242 times 10 to the 18, right? Okay, so let's try. Mm, I want to do it somewhere that is free. So 
3.98. Let's do it here. 19 joules. So I said that one joule is equal to 6.242 times 10 to the 18 EV. So I want to get rid of joules. So joules should be at the bottom. Okay, one joule is equal to 6.242 times 10 to the 8 EV. Let's see if we get the same answer. It's my calculator. So joules cancel out with joules. I will be left with EV. Okay, why am I doing this even though it's just like dimension analysis? Because I know someone will not be able to do this. Let's do it together. Kenapalah asyik cakap tekak ni? 6.242 times 10 to the 18. It's not 8. 18 eh? 10, 10 to the 18. So I got 2.48 EV. So which is the same. Okay, so when you Google joules to EV, don't panic. Just use it like this. Or you can remember it like this. I don't I don't care as long as you get the answer. Eh? As long as it works for you, you understand what you're doing. So it's fine. Okay, moving on. Next one. Kenapa saya bulatkan ni? Oh, tadi. What is the Broglie's wavelength? So dia bagi hint, terang dan nyata. Use this equation of an electron where the mass is 9 times 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram which is moving at a speed of 1.2 times 10 to the 7 meter per second okay this is just a case of just putting in the values lah very easy so h is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules per second then we have the mass given and then we have the speed so you will get something in meters okay so the wavelength is always in meters and you can convert it to pico or nano or whatever uh, scientific notation, I mean, what do you call? Prefix that you prefer. But you don't have to, as long as you get the answer right. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Calculate the energy in EV, again in EV, of a photon whose frequency is below. So you have 620 terahertz, gigahertz, megahertz, and determine the corresponding wavelengths of these photons. So it's asking, hey, what's the wavelength? state the classification of each on the electromagnetic spectrum um okay so about this state the specific state the classification of each on the electromagnetic spectrum when you solve this you get something in lambda right uh, you get something in wavelength and then from the spectrum that we saw we saw the radio wavelength and then we saw the infrared and then we saw visible region, and so on. I don't remember. Gamma, x-ray over here. You don't have to memorize. If they ask you to give classification for each wavelength, I will make sure they give you this diagram. You just have to pick. Kiranya dah tahu wavelength apa? Just pick your classification from the diagram given. Okay, so don't mem you don't have to memorize. I don't memorize it, I and I'm a light engineer. I don't remember it. Okay, so 620 hertz. 620 hertz, let's use, um, let's find out the wavelength. So we have E, no, we have C equals to um, F lambda. So C is three times 10 to the eight. Frequency is 600 tera. What is tera? What is tera? Eh? 620. Does anyone know what tera is? Terabyte. Uh, I forgot what tera is. Twelve. Twelve. Eh? So pico tera. Okay, yeah, pico tera. So pico is minus twelve. Tera is to the twelve times ten to the twelve. So that is your hertz, and then you can solve it for lambda. So lambda will give you. Tujuh uh, puluh lah. Sinian. You get four. 0.84 times 10 to the minus 7 and if you want to make this into nano you need to tambah 2 kat sini so that you can tam tolak 2 kat sini tambah 2 tolak 2 so 484 times 10 to the minus 9 484 nanometer okay you want to change this to minus 9 kena tolak 2 where should you balance it out you should tambah kat sini so tambah 2 484 Tambah dua values. I mean, what do you call it? I don't know. Tambah dua lah. 
Okay, 484. So 484, let's look back at the electromagnetic spectrum. 484. So 484 is in the visible region around here. Okay, visible region, visible. Oh, okay. So next one is giga, giga is mega, giga is six. Eh, mega, sorry, kilo three, mega is six, giga is nine. Times 10 to the nine, times 10 to the 12, times 10 to the six. Okay, so sama juga, this guy becomes 3.1, 3.1. Times 10 to the 9. So you get your lambda, whatever that is. So let's see the answer. Uh, 9.68 times 10 to the minus 2. So what is the closest? Kalau saya nak tukar dia jadi milli. Yang closest is milli lah, right? Milli is times 10 to the minus 3. So this is minus 1. I have tambah minus 1. So I need to plus 1 over here. So 96.8 millimeter. Boleh? 96.8 or they change it to centimeter. Kenapa millimeter saya buruk sangat? Okay. Millimeter. So kat orang ni dia buat 9.6 time, sorry 9.68 centimeter. Dia cakap yang ni minus 2 kan buat centimeter je boleh. Boleh juga tak kisah. So let's see 99.68 centimeter. Dia cakap dekat microwave. Is it correct? Where is it? This is the one sebenarnya. 9.6 uh, times 10 to the minus 2. Minus 2. This is minus 4. Oh, this is a hard one to look at. Uh, minus 16. Minus 8. So it should be around here. Which is radio waves juga lah. Boleh lah radio waves. Oh, sebab sini satu. Sebab, so, minus two kat sini lah. So, this is minus two. So, betul lah. It's in radio waves. So, 10 to the minus, eh, 10 to the minus two is over here. Okay. So, here is 10 to the minus 16, 12, minus 8, minus 4, minus 2, 0. Eh, sorry, 0. Minus times 10 to the 1. So about 1 times 10 to the 1 lah. Eh, no. Times 10 to the 0. Betul, it's 0. So 1 times 10 to the 0. So 10, 10 to the power of 0 is 1. So just 1 lah. And then it gets on bigger. Kat sini 10 to the 2 maybe. I don't know. Okay, so 10 to the minus 2 is at microwave. Kenapa saya beri dia tunjuk kat sini? So that you guys know how to use this diagram. Okay, so that was microwaves and then the last one which was mega times 10 to the 6. Oh, because I had a student named mega. It's a really cool name in my opinion. So what name is mega? Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'll break it. Uh, so E equals to, um, what's the answer here? So I'll end up Stop. Okay, so it's 46 mega. So I will to call any 46 times 10 to the 6. So you get your lambda. Where is it? Oh, it's here. So you get ah, ini lambda ni. Tak cari ke? Oh, dah tak cari. What is this? Oh, kat sini. Sorry. My bad. Yang ni dia cari, dia cari apa? EV. Okay, so here 6.52 meter. Okay, 6.52 meter. So terus dalam meter. So what is this? This is 6 um, times 10 to the 1. No, it's not. It's times 10 to the 0. Sorry. 6.52 times 10 to the 0. So this is times 10 to the 0. Microwave. Radio waves. Jap, tadi saya cakap radio ke microwave. 6.52 times 10 to the 0. This is 
9.68 times 10 to the minus 2. Minus 2 and 0. Okay, let's see. Minus 2 is microwave, 0 is radio wave. Mana gambar tadi? Is it here? Okay. Minus 2 is microwave. Oh, betul lah. Minus 2 is microwave. And then, this is times 10 to the 0. That is radio waves. So, basically, you have to know what is the times 10 to, to the something, apa benda lah. Let's say it was, tadi lah, like previously, it was 9.68 centimeter. So, it means 9.68 times 10 to the minus 2. So, minus 2 is in this region. So, microwave. Macam tu, that is how you use this diagram. Because they can't specify all the values, right? So, they give it in um, to the power of lah, 10 to the power of something. Okay, so that's how you use that diagram if you need to. So radio waves, microwaves. Okay, we got that one. And then the last question asked. Um, you this row EV one? Oh, I did. Sorry, I did Calculate the EV of the photon whose frequency. So they ask you to find the EV as well. Saya yang tak sedar. Oh, so sorry. Okay, so E equals to HF. 6, the Planck's, Planck's constant times with the hertz, you get the joules and then we've done this before, you divide by the 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 or you can times it with 1, 6.282 times 10 to the 18 over, this is EV over joules. Boleh, mana-mana lah. Asalkan faham, asalkan dapat jawapan. Okay, so I'm not going to go over the EV because we've done that. Okay, so next one. How fast does a proton have to be moving in order to have the same de Broglie wavelength as an electron that is moving with the speed of 4.5 times 10 to the 6? So, dia tanya, how fast proton ni? So, we have to find out what is Vp. And it's saying that as an electron that is moving at a speed of Ve is 4.5 times 10 to the 6. And then they've given you MP and also ME. So de Broglie's wavelength punya equation is lambda H over MEVE. -E. Sorry, it's just MV. Tapi nanti kita akan guna untuk photon and electron. So you can distinguish between those two by labeling, labeling it by lambda P. H is a constant. Don't label it with P. MP, VP. So dia cakap kat sini, how fast does it have to be moving in order to have the same de Broglie wavelength? Dia cakap dia nak sama dengan lambda E. That is the question here. So it wants to have the same lambda as lambda E. So how fast does VP need to be? So first of all, we need to find out what is lambda E lah. So lambda E, <coughs> let's find out. Uh, this is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 over Me. Use Me, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram. And then the Ve is given 4.5 times 10 to the 6. So you will get something in meters. So the answer is 1.62 times 10 to the minus 10. So they want to have the same wavelength. So this should be equal to... 1.62 times 10 to the minus 10 meter. You have your M, you know what is your H, you can solve for your VP. Okay, so just substitute lah. Okay, so your answer will be around this guy. You have your H, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. You have your MP, it's this guy. Okay, so it's just substitution. I think for the first subtopic, it's quite easy. You only have two guys that you have to remember, which is just Planck. Planck at a constant called H, he mentioned that energy should be quantized. So Planck always talks about energy. So E equals to HF. E equals to HC over lambda. And then let's do a summary. New slide. Planck at a H and then talks about energy. So E equals to HF and HC over lambda and from this equation we also have c equals to f lambda and then the broglie talks about wavelength 
in relation with speed, wavelength and speed and mass. Semula. Lepas tu H, the equation is lambda equals to H over mv. Okay, and then if you have some wavelength, you should be able to use the electromagnetic spectrum and determine whether it's radio, it's visible. You don't have to memorize, you just have to know how to use it. Okay, visible and so on. Okay, and then kena tahu pasal prefix, tera, mega, giga, pico, nano, all those stuff. All right, so we are done with the first subtopic. So have a great rest of the day and have a good weekend and have a great break. It's a break, yay. Saya pun boleh berehat, yay. So we are done. Jangan lupa attendance. And take care everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Doctor. Take Thank care. you, Doctor. Thank 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 you, Doctor. Welcome. Bye-bye. <clears throat>